Asset Management Strategies monthly newsletter. May saw a significant sell-off in all the equity markets. The S&P was down about 6% for the month, nearly erasing all the gains that we'd seen earlier this year, year to date. The international market was even worse. It was down over 11% just for the month of May. The focus again returned to Europe along with our economic indicators showing a slowing recovery even to the point of turning negative as we saw the unemployment rate rise for the first time in many months. Let's talk about Europe for a minute. It's a great place to vacation, but I wouldn't want to go there economically. Once again, the situation seems to be about to bust at the seams, with the Greek voters thumbing their noses at the austerity measures that were agreed to just a couple of months ago. It's a tough pill for their people to swallow, since such a high percentage of them have been accustomed to government dependence. I remember when I was studying international business at the University of London in the mid-80s, visiting Brussels, which was going to be the headquarters of the newly proposed European Economic Community. At the time, it was an experiment, just a, a theory of how the European countries could band together to have one unified currency, which is the euro, yet they could keep their own individual fiscal policies, so they would have one monetary policy with separate fiscal policies. At the time, there was considerable skepticism whether it would work, and now, you know, less than 30 years later, they may be right. One proposed solution is to establish a euro bond, which Germany is adamantly opposed to since all of the European community participants would be on the hook for repayment. Germany is the strongest economic participant. You can understand why they would oppose it. Of course, Greece and the weaker economic players like Portugal, Spain, Italy, Ireland would likely support it, which would dilute the debt that they would owe. If they don't come up with a plan that they can all agree to, this could be the end of the European community. Back to individual country currencies, and that would leave the weaker countries to fend for themselves, which could be disastrous for them. So what's all that have to do with us? Well, first off, with this crisis looming, everybody in the world is buying U.S. Treasuries, and the 10-year Treasury is at the lowest level in history, with the yield just under 1.5%. Economically, it can't help but spill over to us as 25% of our exports go to Europe. Asia growth is slowing and would be affected further by a euro meltdown. Although we had additional issues this time last year, one glaring constant has been this trouble in Europe. The market was doing fine until May of 2011, then sold off. This year, we were off to a good start again until May and then saw the markets pull back. Therefore, we reduced our equity holding during the month and were completely out by the 21st of May. The risk that the market may shoot higher is far less of a concern than the risk that it may stay sideways or drop even more dramatically. We'll wait for a more stabilized market before we get back in and sit patiently in short-term treasuries until they do. Let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next month.